This is the Toshiba Satellite P55 A5200. Uh, it has a bad hard drive, and so we're going to be replacing it with a SanDisk SSD. It's their 240 gig version. And it should greatly improve the uh, performance and battery life of this computer. So what you'll need to begin this uh, disassembly is a uh, small computer Phillips head screwdriver. Um, my favorite size is triple zero, but I think double zero or zero would work as well. Um, and a pry tool. So we're gonna start this by making sure that we disconnect our power. The laptop is powered off. This laptop has an internal battery, so we can't disconnect the battery until we pop the cover off. For servicing this system, this Toshiba must be booted into the BIOS and you must disable the built-in battery. So we're gonna start by taking out all of the screws on the bottom side of the laptop. When you do a disassembly, it's a good uh, idea to have a uh, parts box to put your screws in and to sort them by size. If you touch a metal part of the chassis, uh, it will ground you to it so that it uh, prevents electrostatic discharge when you touch components inside. Uh, you can also touch the uh, metal part of the HDMI port. Um, sometimes the metal part of the VGA port or the metal parts of the USB ports. Those will also ground you to the chassis of the, uh, the device. All right. On this device, we have screws hidden under these grommets here. They're little rubber, rubber things. Um, they're not under the big feet. We don't want to peel those off because they will uh, be a little difficult to get back on. Seems that we have all those off. Now we'll continue to remove the screws. It doesn't hurt to have a magnetic screwdriver. Um, just avoid uh, having any super strong magnets near or directly on any of the components. Sometimes I'll use Neo magnets like this one to make my screwdriver stronger to pull screws out of hard to reach places. But again, you want to be careful with those around uh, computer components. Just keep their distance. Also, because we still have power attached inside this, this laptop, um, we want to be really careful with uh, dropping screws into the uh, RAM compartment. It might have been a good idea to take that off last. Because uh, a screw in there could be a bad day, seeing as how there's still power in the unit. Once you've removed all the screws from the bottom side of the unit, you can uh, slide the CD drive out. It just slides out real easy. It was held in, held in by this retaining screw. 
So that comes out to get out of your way. Set it aside. Um, next, you are going to open the back side of the unit starting near uh, the power charger port, near the AC charger port. So the black area comes off, the gray area stays down. So it'll just come up easily. You can use the CD drive tray as a, a grabbing point for that. Now you don't want to pry hard because you'll break the uh, the plastic on it. So you can use your um, pry tool to kind of get up here along the edges. And it's good to use a plastic or non-conductive pry tool. Again, make sure not to touch any of the components inside. Um, it's a good idea never to touch them, but if you have to, um, you want to be well grounded to the chassis. There we go. And we have the bottom cover off. Doesn't seem to be anything we need to watch out for there. So we're going to set it aside. Now we have access to our main board, our RAM, and our battery. Alright, so this is our old hard drive that has failed, and we are going to take it out and replace it with the uh, solid state drive. So it appears we have two screws here to take out the drive tray, um, and a third. We have a third screw there. So. We're going to continue to be overly cautious about having power on our board. Um, I'm going to put these screws separately. Um, set them right here because these are a different size from the bottom facing screws. It's a good idea as you go through each stage of disassembly that you put the screws in a different compartment or container. Again, that neo magnet helps sometimes, but we have to be a little sparing when we use it. So the SATA drive slides out of the socket, and then we remove the tray. I'm going to slide our computer out of the way so that we don't accidentally drop any screws on it. Um, this tray has four screws. We will remove those, and they screw directly into the sides of our solid state drive. Uh, I put an install date on my drives uh, just so that anytime I do maintenance in the future I know when the hard drive was last replaced. Uh, this solid state drive comes with a uh, additional bracket to make it the standard height of a drive because it's thinner and lighter. Uh, with this chassis I don't believe we'll need that uh, because we have a frame it'll be screwed into the frame and we can do without that extra weight. So, and here's a common mistake. I pushed those three screws that I took out out of the way when I moved my laptop. So we gotta keep track of our screws. That's why it's good to use a container. And these are from a different step, so I'm gonna keep these separate, but these will go right back in. So again, the SATA drive and the, the the hard drive and the CD drive are the only two things that are actually hot swappable in this machine. So now that we have our old drive out, um, if it's completely trashed, we can trash it. If it has uh, sensitive data on it, we should destroy it. That means we need to completely uh, bend the platters out of shape inside. So take a sledgehammer to it or something um, before we dispose of it so that no one gets our data. So. 
I'm going to do a smart analysis on this outside of the computer just to verify um, why it failed, but this drive is definitely done. So then it will be disposed of properly. So let's put the bracket on our new drive. Um, this drive also has screws on the bottom of it. There's some drive trays that uh, it mounts in on the bottom. This one in particular mounts on the side. Forgot which bracket went which went on each side. So I'm going to point that out real quick so that you don't make the same mistake I did. Almost had to go back and watch my own video to see how I took these off of the old drive. Um, okay. So now that I've got these new drive or the new drive in the in the uh, caddy here, um, I got fingerprints all over it. I try to have as few fingerprints in my machines as possible after I'm done with them. Um, so the way these brackets go on the side of this caddy is that when the, uh, the connectors are facing up, this one goes to the inside. Um, I was wrong about removing this motherboard screw. That is not the proper procedure to take out the hard drive. Um, that's not necessary. So this caddy actually goes to the inside and when you take out the uh, the bottom screw there it comes loose so there are only two screws that come out to remove this so and to put it back in we just slide it right into the uh, the connector and that aligns all of our screw holes back up so when we reassemble this we have two screws that we took out of the hard drive caddy here we got one right here, and the other small screw right here. And these are a different size than the screws that screw into the bottom of the laptop. So, we now have a solid state drive installed in our Toshiba uh, satellite. We've made sure we didn't get any foreign objects in here. Um, all the cables are laying back down the way we found them. Uh, we're going to reinstall the bottom on this computer. So we've got the, the bottom face here. This access port lines up with the RAM. And we're going to put it on just as we took it off. We're going to start at a corner and end in where the charger port is. So the charger port is here. And so I'm going to go across the bottom here. And just snap it back into place. go around it once and make sure that it's all snaps together. It is. And now we reinsert all of our screws that we removed from the bottom. And then following that we will put the rubber grommets back in as best we can. Uh, before we get to this screw, we have to put our CD drive back in. So the CD drive goes in so that the rounded bezel faces up. It'll only go in one way. It slides in like so. To save you some trouble when you're reinserting the reinserting these uh, these rubber uh, plugs, the letter on the bottom of them actually matches a letter down inside the uh, the screw hole. 
And somehow, even being as organized as I am using this box, I have misplaced two of them. The very last step is to reinsert the uh, the memory cover. Um, you didn't have to remove this cover, I believe, to get the bottom off, but uh, I like to because it helps me with uh, prying it off and alignment. Now with that fully reattached, we can uh, boot it up and reinstall Windows with our new hardware. Have our power cable. And give it a start. No bootable devices. How wonderful. Alright, so we need to go into our BIOS and uh, enable our new drive.